So, what, uh, like about a month after I put out my UA Trader video, the Traders finally revealed? You know what? Spoilers ahead. Let's just go grab a drink. All right, welcome to the bar, folks. So, first things first. Whew, yeah. You know why I'm dancing? Because I have been saying that the invisible girl is the fucking traitor for almost like eight years at this point. Ever since it was conceived that there was a UA traitor, I've been saying that it was the invisible girl. Not because, you know, she's invisible, but because what she does is suspect. Everything that this lady has done has just been weird when you think about it. And now that it's been all but confirmed, we can go back and look at certain situations and be like, holy crap, this woman was here from the entire time I'm setting up everything from the beginning? Like, hold on, let me let me calm down a little bit because I, I gotta say, I was not expecting this. I was expecting some sort of like loop and then everybody was gonna be like, oh my God, Shoji's the traitor. Oh my God, it's Tokoyami. But instead it's the most obvious person. Oh my God. What's that, you know, philosophy, Occam's razor? When like the most obvious thing is the obvious razor? I think I pre, I, did I reference this? I definitely already talked about this before. You know what, bring up the clip. Hell, I even think that the invisible girl still might be the traitor because she's the perfect spy. I mean, she's invisible. See, I've been saying it. I've been saying that she's the bad guy and guess what she is. Now, will we find out whether or not she's being manipulated behind the scenes? That will probably be the case, but that's yet to be even expanded upon. We can expect more about that when the spoilers hit and everybody on the timeline loses their mind later tonight. But the one thing that I will say is that people really think that this is a story that's ending in the next year, and I say that if that's the case, Horikoshi is setting up entirely too many storylines at that point. And I'm not gonna doubt his writing for a second. To be quite honest, Chapter 334 kinda got a bad rap. It was coming off the heels of the Star and Stripe arc, and to be quite honest, people were questioning Horikoshi's pacing at that point. And it's kind of weird to see everybody really, like, flip on the dime and be like, oh man, this is the greatest series once again. I think that Horikoshi really needs to work us back into the plot because of what's been going on over the past couple of chapters. He doesn't have to win us over all over again, but he has to go back to the series kind of being enjoyable, kind of like how it was when Deku was first starting out being a vigilante. Star and Stripes arc was cool, but it wasn't anything mind-blowing. It wasn't anything phenomenal. It was just a character that appeared, was really strong, and then was defeated. So by moving back to UA and showing us the student, and giving us the inkling that Hagakure is the traitor, while at the same time recycling the formula that we deemed boring and bringing it back and giving it a new refreshing spin. The series has taken its time away from the students at Class 1A. Now it's time to re-involve them back into the plot and show us that what's going on is bigger than they could possibly process at the current moment. Because with the reveal of Hagakure being the UA traitor, I would think that the next chapter would take the time out to possibly flesh out that idea. I don't think Horikoshi would just, you know, announce it and then leave it alone. This chapter purely existed just to let us know that the villains are reeling from the attack against Star and Stripe and now the heroes have an extended period of time to possibly get their shit together before Shigaraki shows up and tries to kill every single one of them. And if I were to point out something really obvious, it's the fact that Horikoshi is kind of spoon feeding us his plans for the next couple of months, whether it be the heteromorph disparity with Shoji or Toga's return and finally you kind of have the whole Todoroki family debacle going on at the same time. Time. And that's not discounting the fact that you still have the high-end Nomus all for one's original body and Shigaraki when he gets all better. There's a lot of ground to cover here. And these particular villains that Horikoshi talks about in this chapter, they're not exclusive. I mean, there's the Lady Nagantan overhaul debacle to go over, there's the possibility of the vigilante showing up, and Stain is still on the loose somewhere. So there are like nine or so independent storylines running concurrently to Deku's right now. So I don't think that My Hero Academia is ending anytime soon, contrary to popular belief. Hey, I could be wrong though. 
But for some people, this chapter really acted as ratification for their certain theories. Anybody who's been watching my videos over the past couple of years knows that I've been accusing the invisible girl of being the traitor for as long as I've been putting out videos. I just put out a video saying that Deku was the UA traitor because I tried to tinfoil hat a theory so hard that I could possibly try to guess what was going on inside of Horikoshi's head. And in that video, I actually accuse her of being the traitor. I know, I literally just referenced that, but still, it's, it's so mind-boggling to me that that I can't believe I was so ignorant not to put out a video accusing her of being the UA traitor when the entire time it was the most obvious accusation. Invisible Girl aside, people also think that this chapter kind of gave more weight to the dad for one theory. I don't see that, but if you do, please let me know in the comments down below. But I will tell you this, if you want your mind completely blown, rewatch season one of My Hero Academia. And when you get to the very end, watch who comes up with the idea to go to the mall where Deku meets Shigaraki for the first time and almost gets his head ripped off. Yeah, it was the Invisible Girl. She's known about this since the beginning, and when this whole story gets blown, loan open, it is going to be so sweet. Though the cliffhanger for 335 is really starting to make me wonder if 336 is going to be from Hagakure's point of view. If I had to guess, it's probably all but certain that her parents are all for one sympathizers and they use their daughter for his personal gain. But considering characters like Number 6 and My Hero Academia Vigilantes exist, I could go ahead and say that it's possible that All for One had Hagakure as a daughter. I don't mean like his literal daughter, I mean like his daughter in a sense that like Shigaraki is his son or his heir. And it's it's gonna be interesting to see what unfolds from here. Because for all we know, to cover up Hagakure being the traitor, maybe there's multiple traitors in Class 1A. What a twist of fate that it would be if Deku has to try to break through to the class to have them come back to the side of life. Cause Hagakure could just be straight up terrified of all for one at this point. But if there were multiple traitors and Class 1A turned against itself, it would be absolutely insane. The scales will dramatically tilt in favor of the villains if it turns out that there's more than one traitor residing within Class 1A. Chapter 335 showed every single one of us that All for One is meticulous in every facet of his planning, so when it comes to picking out a traitor, he knew exactly who to go for. And like I said, my guess is, these people, their entire families are in deep with All for One. And if it turns out that Hagakure and Oyama have parents who are sympathizers of All for One, it could be possible that this panel right here gives more weight to the Dad for One theory. And the reason why I say that that could even be a possibility is that Horikoshi loves the literary device of coincidence. Coincidence loves being the driving force in My Hero Academia. It always just so happens that this character is related to this character and this character is all bent out of shape about something. Also, the dude is a gigantic star. Star Wars junkie, so I think it would be pretty funny if we have that moment where All For One is like, I am your father. Do I want that? Absolutely not. I think Dad For One is one of those theories that just kind of helps the series jump the shark. That is just too much coincidence for your boy. So look, let me know how you feel about Hagakure turning out to be the UA traitor. Were you expecting it as much as I was? And if you were, let me know. And if you weren't, let me know as well. The next chapter is definitely a chapter of uncertainty because it's going to be starting a new arc. Whether or not it'll start from the point of view of Hagakure is to be said, but I kind of don't want the UA traitor to be dragged out any longer. I would like for it to kind of get blown up in our face pretty soon. And I don't want to get anyone too kind of scared at the moment, but when that whole Deku retrieval arc was going on and everybody was teaming up to hopefully take down Deku, three people were left behind. Oyama, Kirishima, and Toei. Now I'm gonna cross out Kirishima possibly being a traitor because he found a way to be productive and help the situation at hand. Oyama and Toru on the other hand, Toru's confirmed to be the traitor and Oyama was nowhere to be found. Also, I wouldn't put it past all for one to have his spy have a partner, or have two individual spies that have no idea about one another. If Kirishima turns out to be on all for one side, that would break my heart, so I'm really hoping it kind of is exclusive to Toru and possibly Oyama. I know the traitor's been formally revealed and I'm still out here screaming that Oyama is some cheese eaten traitor, but I'm not getting caught off guard anymore. So let me know how you felt about this chapter. Do you feel like Horikoshi is getting back into the groove of things? And how do you feel about Toru actually being the UA traitor? This is a storyline reveal that more or less happened about a decade ago. And I think that Horikoshi did a pretty damn good job revealing that Toru was the traitor. But if you got a strong opinion, let me know down below and I'll catch y'all later. Cheers.